All right, here we are in the greenhouse at my house. It's getting towards the end of March. It's about March 20th. Lots of propagation action going on. Some things have already started to germinate. So plants that we're not sure about the germination, I will frequently put a whole bunch of seeds into one pot. Things that might take a couple years to germinate or the seed is old or whatever. If I, if I know the seed's going to germinate, I'll go straight into something like six packs. Uh, but it ties up a lot of space. So, so what do we have here? Dianthus amurensis. So a whole bunch of seedlings have come up. Actually, this was planted February 15th, so that seed was highly viable. Oftentimes, I'll, if I think the seed might go for a couple of years, like peonies or shazandra or a lot of woody shrubs, I'll mulch them with this crushed granite. It's sold for chickens. It's chicken grit. It's sold for chickens to eat, and they get it in their craw, and it helps them grind up their food. But it makes an excellent mulch. Over seeds, any seeds can come up right through it, but it kind of helps keep the pot in better shape. And especially if you're going to put the pot out in the weather, like you would with, say, ginseng, you just want it to go through the normal weather changes. Uh, this protects from the beating rain, which will really compress the soil in a pot. After about a year, this pot would only be half full and there'd be no pore space left. So that's the idea of that. So we have several things popping up. Even the tiniest little seeds will come up through that gravel. This was probably planted last fall. This is rhodiola, Russian strain of rhodiola, a very important adaptogen, which is probably going to be really hard to grow, but we'll try. Once it comes from the very far north or the very high up. Uh, Norway, Iceland, Alaska. Anyway. Uh, what I specifically wanted to talk about was germinating some of the legumes. So they can be kind of hard to germinate, uh, especially if the seed is a little bit old. So this is astragalus here, and this was fresh seed from last year. This was planted February 15th, so it's already germinating quite well. Uh, astragalus gets off to a pretty good start. You could even direct sow astragalus but I and we probably will do some of that but I have reasons for wanting to have some in pots too to be able to sell and so on so they haven't even made their first true leaves yet but. so this was just planted I made up a kind of a sandy mix it likes a very well drained soil it likes low fertility uh, and a little bit on the alkaline side so it's coming from northern China over into Mongolia that whole area pretty dry. And I'm guessing uh, that it has a pretty alkaline soil. It like comes from, or it grows best in gravelly, kind of low fertility, rocky, stony soil. Full sun. So if you've got that situation, there's your plant. Most of my soil is actually probably a little too good for astragalus. But we grow it. It flourishes. It makes seeds. So that's a legume. Now, if that seed was a year old, it probably wouldn't germinate this well. It goes into a deeper dormancy. And I think this is true of a lot of legumes. Uh, and in that case, there are several techniques you can do to break that dormancy. So it has to do with getting water into the seed. So it's the seed coat hardens, is how I think of it. Uh, this water has to get into the seed, the seed has to swell up, the whole germination process starts. As long as the seed is encased in this water repellent uh, outer coating, nothing can happen. So there's various ways that you can break through that. So this is uh, Apios priciana. This is the kind of rare endangered species of Apios. This one doesn't make a chain of uh, tubers, it just makes a single root tuber that gets bigger from year to year. They can get as big as a soccer ball after a while. So this is a fairly rare plant that we happen to have acquired and we definitely want to keep it going. Uh, we got a pretty good seed harvest last year so we got some for sale and we want to grow a lot of plants to be able to sell plants. 
So the first technique I try uh, typically is a hot water soak. What you want to do is take water that's just off the boil. Like it's boiling, you lift up the pan, you're holding it in your hand, and you pour it over the seeds. Well, that sounds like a ridiculous thing to do, but what you have to remember is the volume of the water is equal to the volume of the seeds. So that would have been maybe about a tablespoon of water, slightly more. Really just a splash. Don't want to overdo it. Obviously, you'll, you know, you could kill the seeds with enough boiling water. So these soaked overnight. These have actually been through several processes. Uh, the first time I did it, it really didn't... I got maybe 10%. So you can see which ones it worked on, right? Most of these are roughly the same size that they were. These, one, two, three, four, five. These ones are going to germinate now. These other ones, still not. All right, so these are ready to plant. These ones, I can plant them, but I don't think anything's going to happen. So we can try something different with them. Uh, so planting them, not much to that. You know, they are legumes. It'd probably be good to have. I just make a little hole with my finger and drop one in. So we're planting these in these kind of deep six packs. There's different size pots we could use. Or I, I could plant them out now. I'm not confident that we're not going to get another zap of cold weather. And also, like I said, I want to have some in containers to sell. There's a great deal of interest in this particular species as a perennial vegetable. So we'll get back to the rest of these in a minute. Now what am I going to do with these? Well I could try the hot water thing again. Or I could try something different. I've tried three different things with the uh, with this and what was most effective actually as it turns out was to take these little seeds and rub them on sandpaper, just a piece of sandpaper. They're big enough that you can actually get a hold of them. So I rub them on sandpaper until I can just see the inside of the endosperm. Okay, so just regular sandpaper, medium. I'm not sure if it matters. So I'm just going to rub the seed on there until I can see the lighter color there. Obvious, so I've gotten through the seed coat, in other words. Now, if I put these back in the water, I so I'm going to do that with the rest of these and put them back in the water, and I will expect that 90% or more of them will be swollen up by tomorrow. Uh, the other thing I tried was slitting them with a razor blade, with an exacto knife to be precise, and that I got about oh 20% of them caught, but. When I tried the sandpaper, uh, I got almost 100%. So that's a good way to go. But what's nice is these seeds are big enough that it can actually get a hold of them. Uh, when it comes to little tiny seeds and sandpaper, I don't know, people tell you all the time to rub them between sandpaper. I have a feeling they just kind of roll around. I don't think they really get that effectively scarified. So. For smaller seeds, I still, my preference is for the hot water soak. So we have here, these were soaked yesterday. This is uh, Chinese licorice, Gansau, Glycorrhiza urolensis. And let's see what we got here. So again, you can, you can see the difference between a seed that didn't swell up. They actually even seem to do a kind of a color change. These are going to germinate. These need another go around. We could try hot water again. I'll try rubbing them between two pieces of sandpaper. But you can see I got pretty high. Uh, looks like 80% or more of them actually clicked. I've really seen relatively few that didn't. 
and so these are ready to plant. As I started to say, I don't know if I finished, they're legumes, so it's good to have a soil that's got the uh, mycorrhiza in there. Of course, there's different mycorrhiza for every legume, but just a soil that's grown uh, beans, peas, clover, probably worth adding a little bit of that to inoculate the potting mix. Whether or not that act, the actual mycorrhiza for licorice, glycorrhiza is in there, you don't really know. All right, so I will be planting these. Just dropping one per cell and covering them over. And it looks like we're going to have a whole flat of gansao, which is great. Very important herb in Chinese medicine. We'll make a video about it. Probably the most utilized of all the herbs. Not the most powerful, but it goes into the most formulas. Because it's, well, among other things, it's uh, very good for food poisoning. And so it helps with any possible negative side effects of other herbs. And makes them taste better and goes to all five meridians, etc. Uh, so that's that. So this is another one, Desmanthus. Illinoensis prairie bundle flower. It's a DMT plant, if I'm not mistaken, a perennial, uh, another legume. So we did the same thing here, the hot water soak. And let's see what we got. I'm just going to set these aside. So now that they're soaked, of course, we don't really want to let them lay around long. We need to get planted right away. If they if they were to dry out at this point, that would do them in, I'd say. So here again, we got really good results. Um, that's approximately what the seeds looked like before they were soaked. And so I'm only seeing four or five that did not swell up very nicely. So now I have every expectation that all of this will germinate. I just need to plant it and keep it from drying out. So I'm probably gonna do that in six packs as well. We'll have a flat of each of those.